So as you can see, I have a lot of stuff all around me. So today I want to decorate my living room and walk you guys through the process, bring you guys along with me, and hopefully we are gonna create something really magical. So if you guys wanna see me style my living room and get some tips and tricks for your living room too, then keep on watching. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just create a mood board using the furniture I know I already have. So I already had this print from my last house. My roommate had this white couch. These are not the exact same things we have, but it's enough to give the illusion and the feeling that we're gonna have in the room. Now I already had this pink chair that I'm obsessed with, so I knew that those things were gonna go into the living room. Now the coffee table was something that I found at the thrift store. That was a good statement piece. I knew I wanted this rug, so I threw that in there. Then I threw in whatever else I had already around the house to see what I could kind of make shift to work and what I kind of thought would look good. This is also really good when you are purchasing items to put them all into one board to see how everything complements each other to make sure you're not wasting your money and buying things that won't work. Obviously some things work better when they're actually in the space or don't work as well once you see them in real life but this is a pretty good rule of thumb. It also is a really great way to see how much you're spending on the room and how much each thing costs. It gives you the flexibility to try things out without actually buying them and see what options work the best and just make sure all your colors are matching. Now when you're thrifting, you're usually finding unique one-of-a-kind pieces, but I still like to go online and find similar images to put onto the board to then know what else I need to shop for and also what colors I'm looking for and just to have a better idea of what the room's going to look like. I like to also have a link page so that all of the links for the furniture are on one spot. So once I know what I'm getting, it's really easy for me to just order everything and have everything delivered. So right now, we already have our main furniture pieces, which is our couch, our coffee table, and our rug. Months ago, I was watching Exo McKenna and I saw she had this floor runner from Target and I fell in love with it and I knew I needed it for my house, so the second we got a new place, I went and got that rug, so we had something to kind of bring the room together. So tip number one is get a area rug. You want it nice and big. You don't want something too small. If you get something that's too small, it's gonna make the room feel smaller. So get something big. A good way to gauge is you kind of want it to be the entire size of the room with a little bit of a gap. So you don't want to over pouring onto the other rooms or like taking up every bit of floor space, but you do wanna make sure that it's taking up a good portion of your space and filling that void and that will kind of section off your room for you. Now, in our house, we do have an open floor plan, so our living room is here and our kitchen is here. So the rug in our space is really good to kind of section off the living room versus the kitchen. Okay, so we're gonna start with that big wall right there. Now our couch is not exactly centered to it. It's like obviously to the corner, but we need to put something there. And in my old house, I had this big print and the green in it matches the rug. So it's like the same shade of tealish. So I think it'll work really well. Okay, so here is the print on the wall. Now you guys can see it is a little bit small for the wall and it's a little bit to the right. Now this whole room is a little anchored to the right because our doorway is over there. So it kind of works out well. It is a little small, you could do something bigger, but we're gonna have a lot of decor in here. So it will end up working and keeping it simple on that wall is gonna help us later on to not feel cluttered. Tip number two is to figure out where you want your focus. Are you gonna have a lot of decor pieces and do you wanna keep your walls more simple or do you wanna really have a gallery wall and have a lot going on on the walls and keep your details to a minimum? So for us, as I said, we're gonna keep the wall nice and simple. We have nice pretty white walls here and we are gonna add a lot of little details So I have this little acrylic table and I have this plant, which if you see right there, there's a little gap there and there's a big like empty space behind this chair. I figure we have this perfect acrylic 
side table. And it's a great height for the couch, so I figured we could put that there. And then I love greenery, and we don't have any greenery on that side of the room. So I have this big plant. It's a nice space filler, so I figure we could put that there too. Something that's really important is knowing your materials. So before you start decorating a room, you need to decide what type of textiles you want. So are you using a lot of furs or patterns or woods or metals? Like what are you using to have consistency in your room? And you don't want to have too many opposing textiles. So we have wood on the rim of this chair here, and we have a wood coffee table that we picked up for $15 at Goodwill. That's an awesome steal. But, okay, so we have wood there, we have wood here. If we are gonna have a wood side table, it would have to be the same type of wood, and it would make the room feel very heavy and dense because we have so much wood. So I really like that it's an acrylic, and it's not gonna like, draw the eye too much towards it, but it's nice to be able to put drinks on it, to maybe put a light or some books or something. So I think it's gonna be really useful. Tip number three is to choose your textiles wisely, to know what type of textiles you want in the room and what feeling you're going for so it's cohesive and not scattered all over the place and everything's really intentional. So I wanted to show you guys this planter. It is a big gray vase. I probably got it at Goodwill or Michaels on clearance or something. It is really important to take note of the colors you're using. We are not going for a gray room in here at all. But I do have one other like metal piece that has the same color so it will make it look more intentional and tie it all in. But if you found a really good vase that you liked that had a good price point, if you don't like the color or the pattern, that's totally fine. Just grab some spray paint and paint it up and it will totally give it a new face. I've done that for so many planters and stuff like that. But this is gonna work and it's in the corner so it's not like a main statement piece. So I think it's gonna be okay. Most of your eye attention is gonna go to the plant. Now, these are all fake leaves. I got these from Walmart for a dollar a piece. So when styling your plants, and it does sound a little silly, but you wanna put some rocks or sand or something in there to like kind of hold it together. And then you wanna like turn them so they look nice and full and not like spotty or backwards. So I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. You can see the acrylic, you can hardly see this here. That's like really not the point of it. We wanna focus on the chair, the plants, but this is great, as I said, to use as a side table. Also, I wanted to take note of the furniture size. The furniture size is super, super important. If I had a side table that was up here, it would look super awkward, but you also don't want something too low. So you wanna get a side table that's kind of the same like level as your couch. Now this has an arm cushion, but it's a little higher, but it's the same level as the cushions. Tip number four is to pay attention to the size of the furniture. As I talked about, the rug is really important, but you don't want a couch that's like taking up the entire room. You want to have room to walk, you want to have room to sit and be comfortable. Now you don't want furniture that's too small either because that's going to make the room feel smaller and it's also going to be a lot less comfortable to use, especially in a living room. I would say try to get furniture, especially when you're looking at pieces like a couch, that's about two thirds of the room. So you're not wall to wall, but you're also not too small either. Just play with proportions and be very aware. Also really try to measure before you buy. That'll save you so much money and time and effort and energy. So tip number four is to stay aware of the size of your furniture. Okay, so what I think that I wanna do here is put some books. Now, books are great decor. I've talked about that in the past. You can find really, really great books at a thrift store. But when you're looking at a thrift store or really any bookstore at all, you want to find hardcover books that you can take the sleeves off of. That's gonna give you the best appearance and you also really wanna look for colors that match your room and titles that you like. 
Now titles are not always as important, but it's usually nice when the titles are something that you enjoy or you're interested in or have something to do with the room and are not just so random. But if you find a book that you absolutely love and you don't love the title, then you do you. <laughs> so now if you aren't looking at the thrift store, but you want some really, really good home books that you will be obsessed with, you have to get the Magnolia home books. So I have both versions of the Magnolia table books and I love them. They have such good content in there and the books are like so sturdy and the pages are so nice. They have that beautiful smell. The only downside to these are that they do not have the covers. Now from the side, it looks really nice because it's the fabric with a pretty title, but on the top, it is the picture. So you do see the hat. I don't know if you really mind, but they do look beautiful from the side. So they're great for stacking or for like a bookshelf. However, if you want a coffee table book, then the book Homebody by Joanna Gaines is so beautiful. Again, the pages are so thick and nice and it's just luxurious, but this is just like the prettiest neutral book and it doesn't have any photos on it. So you could use this as like a centerpiece or again to stack it. So we're gonna put these on this little shelf. Now, I would really love these in my kitchen. However, I don't want anything spilt on them or anything splatting on them. So to keep them nice, I'm keeping them in my living room, but I get my kitchen is right there, so it's really easy for me to grab. But you also wanna make sure that you have books you're gonna use to have them in a place that makes sense. To have these in my bedroom upstairs doesn't really make as much sense because I won't really use them, but keep them where you will use them. Now I could do that and keep them neutral, but I have this black, and I don't like that on top as much. So I think I'm gonna do it like this. I would love it if I could do the home body on top, but it's a bigger book and I think that looks a little disproportionate. So you wanna keep your bigger items on the bottom and build up with smaller. It's just more attractive to the eye and brings the eye's attention to the right place. To comfort. This is a living room and personally I want to be comfortable in my living room. I don't want it to be too sterile. I want it to feel lived in. I want to be able to sit here and enjoy myself. Now granted we don't have a TV in my living room so if you have a TV then you definitely want to be able to cuddle up and watch a show. So how do you achieve that? Well the first thing is having some pillows and having a blanket as a throw on your couch. One is really good to cover any imperfections, but two, it just adds a more cozy feel instead of such a sterile feel. Tip number five is to have a place to store your blankets in an attractive way. So you could have a blanket ladder, which I'm actually gonna do a DIY showing you guys how to do that for my bedroom. You could do a basket like I have, and I'm about to show you that. You could do a chest like I have in my bedroom where you can store pillows and blankets that way. Or you could do an ottoman or a coffee table that has some built-in storage. Those are really good too. Some couches have that as well. But you wanna have a place that you can store your blankets and pillows in an attractive way to not keep it looking messy but to have that comfort with easy access so here I have three blankets now this one's really cozy but it has some gray in it and not that that's bad but this room is very warm and gray is a cool tone color so I think that we're gonna stay away from that one and this is a brown but again it's it's very cool and has this color on the side but just more cool tone and then we have this blanket here which is cream, which matches really well. It takes some of the harshness off of the white from the walls and has this beautiful texture here. So it breaks up the room and the couch a little bit. So we're gonna actually use this to hang over the couch. And then with our blankets, we're just gonna fold them up nicely and put them into our basket. When placing them into the basket, you want them to look full and it's okay to like kind of drape it out if you want and you like that look, it makes it look very cozy and lived in without looking messy. But our couch, the backing comes up on this side and it also comes up on this side over here. So it's kind of more flat here and it's also the corner of this L-shaped couch. So we're gonna use the blanket to kind of fill that space. Also, it is a corner, so it's kind of an anchor. 
and it's a good anchor spot to put a blanket. Now when it comes to folding your blanket that you're resting, you don't want to fold it into a square like you normally would. You kind of want to fold it like you would a towel into three long ways. Okay, so I kind of like how this looks here. Now I want to anchor it with some more pillows. So when looking for throw pillows, you want to look for a few things. You want to look for texture. Texture is really important. So this is like a nice fuzzy material with some fringe. The texture is going to really bring some life into your room and make it look more interesting to the eye. Now this color doesn't match exactly with the room, but it's the same type of tones and we had it in the works. Now throw pillows can be very expensive. You can really easily make your own or use what you have, but just put Pay attention to the texture and the colors. Now I got this really cool with one with one of the bed sets I got and as you can see it's a cream color with some more fringe like this blanket but it also has this beautiful detailing so we're gonna put that on top like that and I think that's good we don't want too many pillows because we don't want to overwhelm and obviously we want to be able to sit on the couch. Wait, I almost forgot. We need a pillow for this chair. Guys, this chair is beautiful, but I do think that it would make it look a little more cozy if we had a pillow. So I have this beautiful one that has these beads all over it, and it's a champagne color that really goes with what we're going for. Now, the beading kind of matches the Victorian vintage look that this chair has. I think it really complements the feel. You wouldn't want to do like a super modern pillow with this vintage chair. So make sure that what you're piecing together tells a story and goes together and like complements each other and isn't too opposing. Welcome to my coffee table. As you guys can see, we have two sections here. This one is a third of the table and that one is two thirds of the table. Now, when we picked our coffee table, I knew I was looking for wood because one, I just love the natural textiles, but two, I wanted it to match the wood of the armchair. If you guys have been following me for a while, then you guys know I love to thrift and this was $15. I looked it up and to get a table similar to this, it's like minimum $300. So I saw it and I was like, we have to get it. But it just worked out that the proportions of it are perfect. This is an L-shaped couch and this rectangular shape really fills that void and is like a great shape for it. Now, if we had a circular coffee table, it kind of wouldn't work as much with the L couch. If you have an L couch, I really recommend getting a rectangular coffee table to complement that shape. Now, if you have like seating on both sides and just a three person couch, then you can do a round or square or a rectangle, it's up to you. You can also use a round coffee table if you just are using a normal like three-seater couch or a love seat, that all works. But for an L-shaped couch, I think it just throws it off a little bit because we already are creating that rectangular shape with the couch itself. Moving on to styling. I'm a big fan of finding things at the thrift store to style and also using what you already have. Now, every time you move, that does not mean you have to buy everything new all over again. So try to reuse what you already have as much as possible and find whatever you can in the thrift store. Obviously, TJ Maxx and Ross and Marshalls and all of those have really amazing things as well to fill whatever you can't find everywhere else. So the first thing that I'm gonna put in is this abstract star. This gray matches the same gray as the base for the plants we had before. It has a touch of gold that brings some warmth to it. Now an abstract shape, whether it be a circle or some weird shape or a star, it just kind of adds some shape and movement to your room and the metal is a great way to bring a new element of texture to it. Now because this has the shadow from the covering obviously it is a little bit harder to see unless you're far away so I am gonna bring them out towards the front a little bit not all the way up here but out a little bit more so it's easier for the eye to see now if you have something that has a roof to it or a shelf above it you do not want to do anything like a candle candles are really great for styling but not when there's something above it because 
you could start a fire. So I do have some candles I wanna use, as you can see, but we are not going to put them underneath. Some great things for a coffee table like this or for any shelves are books, as I said, and pottery. Pottery is really fun to find at the thrift store. It just adds a more authentic, interesting vibe to your room. So here is some books that my roommate Jules had, some books that I found at the thrift store that I liked how they looked and we're just gonna kind of play with them. Both this book and this book are hardcover books, but they are not able to take the sleeve off of them, but it's pink and I like this like muted pink to, in this room. Plus it's rose all day, so it matches with the kitchen vibe. And this is The Year of Cozy. It's a cream book and I'm gonna be putting these like standing up, so you're really just gonna see the title and it's gonna be underneath, so nobody's gonna be seeing the top. So The Year of Cozy is another book that's like a coffee table book. They have a lot of recipes and crafts in here. So this is something kind of similar to the Joanna Gaines ones. So this is really nice to have down here too. We'll use it a lot. Because I'm not obsessed with these pictures, I'm gonna stand them up and you won't even really see them. But I think that's it for this side. We don't wanna overdo it, but as I said, the books are perfect to fill space and they actually add some height as well. Instead of just having a whole bunch of small or large things, it can change up the different heights. Really play with heights in any room. You want to have small things and big things and that will keep it interesting to your eye. It will just bring the room together and look more balanced. So a lot of books will have, you can't really see it here, but they'll have like the binding section here as one color and then the actual book as another color. I don't like really how that looks. So in this case, I want to stack to kind of cover that if I can. Now it's a little small, so it may be the top, but I'm thinking if it's high enough, it will look okay. So for these books, I don't actually love the titles of them, but they're like horizontal, so you're not gonna see them. And I just love the color. This mustard was so pretty. Now, as you can see with these books, they are different sizes, and that again keeps it really interesting. Same as the heights, you don't want everything the same size. It looks too cookie cutter, too perfect almost. You want your house to look very lived in, so play with different sizes. So I think this rock is really pretty. It's just interesting. I could put that down there, but it's a little small, and I don't think it would get the recognition that it needs. Now here are some coasters. I think coasters are a really useful, practical way to bring some beauty into your life. These ones are really pretty hexagon marble. The hexagon adds a cool, interesting shape to the room and the marble is just simple and easy. Use practical, beautiful things as decoration. So things that you have that you're gonna use like find the pretty versions and use them as decoration. They don't, you don't just have to use like useless knick-knacky decor items. You can use things that you actually use in your real life as decor. So now this vase I thought was so pretty on it for $5 at Goodwill. It's authentic ceramic and I love the color. It's that warm terracotta color that matches the rug really nicely. And I like the little sun. It's a good shape and size. So I'm gonna add that next to it. But it's a great piece for underneath because it's big enough that your eye can see and it just like takes up that space really nicely. So I have this beautiful ceramic dish that I got it Tuesday morning for like a dollar and I loved the green it, again it matches the picture we have up there and the like tealish color we have in the rug it's not too bright of a green it matches really nicely so I thought this would be a good way to like put some things on the plate in the middle of the coffee table and kind of use that as my anchor centerpiece use trays or dishes as a way to kind of collect things and give it more of a unified presence. Instead of having a whole bunch of knickknacks laying around, this will give it a more cohesive, unified look. Now, you can find a lot of plates and trays at the thrift store. Again, it's they're super, super affordable. 
so it, you don't have to spend a lot of money on this. So I'm gonna put that in the middle of my coffee table. I think I wanna add a plant, nothing too big that's gonna take up too much of the space, but a little one to add some greenery. The greenery is just gonna liven it up. And then this warm, rich candle, and who doesn't love a candle? And lit, it's gonna add some really pretty light. So we could throw that in there. Then we have our coasters, like I talked about. So we could stack those. Now if you see, like the, it's like very heavy here, very heavy here, and then light. So we have some opposite diagonal. Then we have this little rock I talked about before, and that's just gonna be like a really pretty little piece. I think that that is good. This is basically what it's gonna look like. We have height, we have tall and small. They're all different heights. We have different sizes. So I think that it's a nice balance. Now just to show you guys, if I didn't have that plate there, this is what I was talking about. These same four items in the exact same arrangement look very out of place, don't look to have a purpose because they're just kind of sitting here awkwardly. So this plate and having this dish here really brings a unified look. But now it looks like it has a purpose. All right, so moving on to the entryway. Now this is the door and you walk right into the living room. So I do want to include this in the video as well. It's not a very big entryway, but I think it's important to again, separate your rooms, even in one big open space. And when you walk in, you have keys, you have jackets, you have your purse, you have all of that stuff. So I wanted a place to put it. <laughs> Here's the mood board for the entryway. I knew I had a vertical welcome sign and that I really wanted a coat rack with some dark wood and some dark hardware. So I put a little picture for inspiration there. We got this piece of furniture and then I just kind of played around with other options I already had to come up with a storyline and a cohesive look. As you guys may have seen, last week we made this coat rack right here. I'm really happy with how it turned out. We have the wood matching the wood in the coffee table and the chair, and then we have this piece. So this piece we got for free. It's wood which matches the rest of the room, but it's not the same color, and the hardware doesn't really match, but it was free and we didn't have anything to go there and it works out, so right now it's perfect. We may not keep it forever, but it's good for right now. And it's really practical, it's great. It has the drawers for our keys, and I just wanna style it a little bit. I wanna put some jackets on there, and show you how I'm gonna style my entryway to be practical, but also beautiful. So the first thing that you want in any entryway is some type of rug. Now, some entryways are hallway, now you would want a hall runner, but for us, we just need a little like rectangle to like, cover the floor. Now this one is just like a jute mixed with a cream thread, and it matches our like natural materials that we're using. So I'm just gonna put that in front of the door. I'm gonna hang some jackets up here because realistically that's what we do in our day-to-day -day life. It is the first place that you see when you walk into the house and it's the last thing you see before you leave. So I want it to be beautiful and I wanna put some fun stuff here. So I have a sign from my old house that says welcome that I thought would be perfect. And I also got this little vase here from Goodwill for I think like a dollar. And I collected these just like on a walk the other day. I liked that it was a plant, but even though it's dead. And I liked the texture it gave and it's the color that matches the same neutral tones. And then I was on Facebook Marketplace shopping and I went to pick something else up and this girl had an extra gold frame and I really liked it. Now we have no black in here, but this is a black velvet and I kind of think it would be cute to like pin some photos up here and kind of have it as like push pin board. I don't know. So if we're gonna arrange that somehow, I kind of think the black also is really nice because it ties in with the black legs of this piece. So obviously the welcome has to go vertically. Maybe that one. right like so we'll have some pictures as you can see it plays with heights it goes from tall medium small and then it goes back up over here so your eye is moving along with it and I think that these colors all go really nicely together we have the golds and the browns it's all very natural and it matches our rug as well all right now we're going down to the floor so you guys can see the rug it looks really nice with the aesthetic we got going on now for the other practical side 
Realistically, we I like to have everybody take their shoes off to not track dirt and grossness around the house. So this is a great place to store shoes. You can also put a pair underneath, but we have three people live here, so it's just enough space for three pairs of shoes. And then we also have a dog. So I don't like to have the dog toys all over the place. So I have this little basket. So this is wicker, but it's the same color as the wood in the coffee table and the same color as the chair. So I thought that this here would be nice for her leash, for her balls, for her toys, whatever we have. So if we want to grab her leash or her ball on our way out the door, we can do it right here in a convenient spot. And then we can have our three pairs of shoes nice and neatly stored here. And we can throw them on on our way out. Of course, we have more than one pair of shoes each, and we just keep those in our closet, but it's nice to have a pair down here just in case, and usually these are like our go-to ones we wear on a daily. It just so happens that the orange, black, and tan match the room aesthetic, which is very helpful as well, but it's definitely not a mandatory. But we just like to keep one pair of shoes down here instead of having all of our shoes down here because it gets very cluttered and very messy very quickly. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys.